Hello and welcome to the behind the scenes recording of our 51st live show, courtesy of the East Metal Public Library. This is your host, Mark Torres speaking. I'm here with our very own Def Dominic Definis Mansperano. Hello, everyone in Radio Land. And we're going to have our special guest we're going to be talking to with and about. We have filmmaker Lee Kalinsky. Hello. And we have his uh, daughter, uh, Julie Kalinsky, who's a podcaster. Hello. So we're going to talk to them in just a second, but first- She's a what? What did you say she was? Podcaster. She's a podcaster. Oh, it kind of got garbled when she was saying oh. hi. Okay, she's a podcaster. And our very own Jenny Feldy will be joining us in just a minute. So let's uh, get the button to go and make sure I do this right. Is there so many buttons here? <laughs> All right. Here we go. The following is brought to you in part by MFC Studios. The views of the show's host and guests do not necessarily reflect those of the management, owners, or staff of this radio station. And now, it came from the radio. Yeah, but joy and welcome once again to it came from the radio the official the big apple con this is your host mark torres speaking um we are here live in front of a virtual studio audience via zoom courtesy of the east metal public library for our 51st live show that's right we've been doing live shows for 51 months in a row um and i am here with none other than fishy sarcasms dominic definition man serrano hello everybody I believe uh, the life of Jenny, Jenny Feldy is here, but if she's not, say hi. And she's, she's coming. And we have our uh, special guest who we'll be talking to with and about. We have uh, from our own show, uh, the Jaybird and Lee, we have filmmaker Lee Kalinsky. Hello. And his daughter, Julie, which is Jaybird. Hello. So before we do any of that, we have to take it away with the news. The news is brought to you in part by the fine folks at the Big Apple Con, which we are the official radio show of, celebrating over 25 years of comic bookness and pop culture stuff. For more information, go to www.bigapplecc.com. Their next convention, which is scheduled for January 29th, is the Big Apple Trading Card Show. It is a one-day show, and tickets are on sale right now. I believe they're having a deal. If you go to their website now, it's only $10. If not, you have to pay more at the door. also want to give um, a shout-out for our uh, Patreons, of which there are. Danny Grillo, award winning director Jared Burrell, Kyle Horn, Millie Portez, Newsday Famous, Dresden Media, Orange Gun, Shadow Rabbit Art, The Huracan, Yasmin and Ray, and Rosa. You want to get your own little shout out, go to www.camefromradio.com and on our brand new page, there's a support us button. You click on that, and it'll take you right to our Patreon. And just for a dollar a month, you can get your own little shout out. Muse is brought to you also in part by the fine folks at sci fi.radio. That's sci fi for your Wi Fi. And as well as Cosmic Comics of Games of Baldwin, New York, your one-stop shop for comics and collectibles, give Chuck a call at 516-763-1133. All right, so let's see. Uh, usually we'll start off with the sad news, as we always tend to do, and we have one bit of sad news for us to start off with. Thank God, uh, only one. Well, we have one and a half, but this is really one. Uh, voice actor, director, and producer Scott Page Padger, P-A-G-T-E-R, died recently from cancer. Um, in short, Scott had a huge hand in my love, Mark's love, of Power Rangers as he produced and worked on over 300 episodes of the series starting in 1995 all the way up to 2002 when the series got sold to Disney and the production moved to New Zealand. Um, are you guys a Power Rangers fan? Julie, are you a Power Ranger fan? I haven't really gotten into it, so... Um... No. <laughs> the, the, the franchise has been around longer than you've been alive. <laughs> Get into it. Way to make her feel old, sir. <laughs> I think it makes the rest of us feel old instead. <laughs> um, Lee, are you a Power Ranger fan? That was, that was around when you were around, right? They were around, but no. I mean, I have, you know, 
seen them, but I don't, I'm not into it very much. You um, know they exist. Uh, I do know they exist. I know there's a red one and a blue one. I think pink one. <laughs> oh, that's that's true. That's true. I think there's a yellow one. There. I don't know if it, I don't know, but maybe. <laughs> there's a good chance there's a yellow one, at least one in the uh, 26 years that the show's been on the air, yes. Uh, Dominic, you're, I know, I know you're not much of a Power Ranger fan, but we did see the movie together. If you remember, oh, that. <laughs> I try to forget that actually. <laughs> so, so bad, but yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm not a huge, I'm not as big as you are into the Power Rangers. But um, he had a, he had a fan. He, he, it was, it was mostly him. It was Saban, and he did a lot, a huge chunk of the, the series. So he was a young, fifty-two years old. Wow. So moving on to the uh, second bit of news, which is while it's still sad, he's not dead yet department. Uh, legendary artist George Perez made this post on social media recently. George says, <clears throat> on November 29th, I received confirmation that after undergoing surgery for a blockage in my liver, I have stage three pancreatic cancer. It is surgically inoperable and my estimated life expectancy is between six months to a year. I have been given the option of chemotherapy and slash or radiation therapy, but after weighing all the variables and assessing just how much my remaining days would be eaten up by doctor visits, treatments, hospital stays, and dealing with the often stressful and frustrating bureaucracy of the medical system, I've opted to just, like nature, to just let nature take its course, and I will enjoy whatever time I have left fully as possible with my beautiful wife of over 40 years, my family, my friends, and fans. I am already arranging with my art agent to refund the money paid for sketches that I can no longer finish. And since despite only having one working eye, which I did not know, he can still sign my name. I also hope to coordinate one last mass book signing to help make my passing a bit easier. I also hope that I'll be able to make one last public appearance when I can be photographed with as many fans as possible with the provision that I get to hug each and every one of them. I just want to be able to say goodbye with smiles as well as tears. Uh, Dominic, you're a uh, George Perez fan? Who isn't? I mean, really, like who doesn't at least heard of him, if not know his work, liked his work, any of it. So, yeah. So, so Julie, let's see if, if, if who doesn't know who George Perez is. Do you know who uh, George Perez is? Uh, <laughs> that, sitting that in means, front of the computer, no. Google it. It's like a Google it. <laughs> So I know I know Lee, you're a comic book fan. So you're well aware of uh, George. Uh, yeah, but I'm not like you know as much of a huge. Um, I'm not into as as much as I used to be, but I do know. Well, he's a big time. I mean, 80s and 90s. You know, Infinity War. Yeah. He did. He did yeah. uh, Crisis of Infinite Earths. Uh, he worked on the Incredible Hulk with uh, my favorite writer of all time, Peter David. And having met him, he's a really nice guy. Like he's a super popular high end artist. And just meeting him in person, you know, he took time out just to say hi to me. We had a little chit chat and he didn't have to, you know, I mean, he's just, he's working and signing. And you, sometimes you see people have such long lines. It's really nice that they take the time out to appreciate the fans because I guess without them, they wouldn't be there. Is that how it works? Exactly right. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that's great. I mean, even the fact that he wants to like hug every one of them later on, you know, in one big signing and stuff. It's, it's yeah. And, you know, uh, I've, I've said it before, sometimes miracles happen, so he's not dead yet. So let's appreciate him now while he's alive. And hopefully he'll make it for, you know, two, three, four, five more years. You never, you never can be 100% sure. So he's not dead yet. Let's not mourn him that he's dead. Let's keep the positivity going. There you go. There, you know, hopefully he'll, he'll be okay. Yeah. Um, so moving on to the not as sad news. Oh, good. From the... <laughs> That's a lot of nuts department. The new Disney film, Enchanto, has held on to the number one spot in the domestic box office for the second week in a row, pulling in an additional $13 million, beating out the new Ghostbusters sequel, which brought in an additional $10 million in its third week of release. For those keeping track, Shang-Chi is still the highest grossing film of 2021, with uh, $224.5 million, followed by Venom at number two with $210 million. And Chanto has moved up from 26 to number 18 of the highest grossing movies of all of this year. Hold on, um, hold of, on. You're calling it Enchanto? Yeah. I Enchanto. believe it's Enc Encanto. And I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering it. <laughs> there is no, there's no H after the C, sir. Oh, I typed it in with an A. <laughs> no, 
on Compto, I believe. And that that's with my, you know, white boy Hispanic inflection here. Okay. Like en enchant sir. Sir. Oh, sir. Well, you know on the worst on the worst Puerto Rican ever. Yeah. Your, your last name is Torres, sir. <laughs> of of, of oh, no, no that movie. Ghostbusters and Venom are all available to see legally in theaters, while Shang-Chi is also available to see for free on Disney streaming service with paid subscription. Keep in mind, their numbers do not reflect the revenue made from said streaming services. So um, I know Dominic hasn't been to the movies, and we have Jenny Feldy joining us. Jenny, are you there? Hello. Yes. I actually went to the movies two nights ago, but I did not see that. Did you not see Ghostbusters, Venom, or in uh, Encanto? I saw the Gucci movie with Jared Leto in a fat suit, which was amazing. Oh, okay. Incredible. Yeah, Jared Leto in a fat suit, highly recommend just for that character. Or just, oh. just find clips of that character. Did, but back you, to you. Did you come on and say hello or hola? Uh, I don't know what I said. <laughs> just because I was going to say, like, I think your hola pronunciation is better than Mark's. Yes, uh. that is true. Yes. <laughs> um, so, so, Lee, you're a filmmaker. Do you go out and watch movies all the time? Did you watch any of the movies mentioned? I mean, I watched a lot of movies. I saw Shang-Chi. That was good. So that I watched. I haven't been to the theater in a long time now. I think the last movie I saw was like Boss Baby Two or something like that. In the theater, so. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I don't think a lot of people have. I went to the theater. It was empty. <laughs> Two people besides me and one other. That's it. Boss yeah. Baby. Why did you go see that? <laughs> it wasn't by. Probably if you look to your left, that's the reason <laughs> why. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> no, I had the, uh, the. My son was very much. Uh, in it was more at him. Oh, so it wasn't you. Deflect, deflect, deflect the blame. Yes, I, was deflecting, but yes, I really yeah. wanted to be there. Okay, so so Julie, did you see uh, any of those movies we mentioned? Encanto, I... Ghostbusters, and or uh, Shang-Chi? Well, I've seen Ghostbusters. I, I haven't watched Shang-Chi. I've heard of it. I wanted to watch it, but haven't. I've obviously watched Ghostbusters. But, uh, no, you saw the first yeah, one, I not have... the new one. You're talking about the new one. Oh, um, you know there's a new one, right? No. <laughs> Lee, do you keep her in like a little box and don't let her out at all? No, like we've been watching a lot of older films <laughs> from the we 1990s. Watch, we watch older films. <laughs> okay. All right. Fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So moving on. Uh, so going back on the Power Rangers uh, um, segment of news from the. Oh, great. <laughs> from the. Insert morphing time here, department. Netflix has announced that Power Rangers will have a Power Rangers cinematic universe of connected films and television adaptations coming exclusively to the streaming service, which will consist of multiple streaming series and movies, including the new film, which is going to be set in the 90s when the original show aired. As a Power Ranger fan, I am actually interested to see what they're going to do. My hopes are not that high because I know what cinematic universes are. They always put the cart before the horse and they don't focus on making good products first. And they just want to make an interconnected thing without putting the, the work into it to make it interconnected. Um, you say that of Marvel or just everyone who tried to do a Marvel did? I say that of everyone who tried to do a Marvel did. Because I mean, actually, okay. if you think about it, Marvel didn't even know they were going to make a cinematic universe. They're like, wouldn't it be cool if, and then it just kind of blew up. And the only other uh, quote unquote cinematic universe I can say that did a good job is the Conjuring universe, because that they focus on making the movies first and then they tied it into the other movies. So more or less, you'd say that uh, anyone else trying to make a cinematic universe just copied the DC method, just throw it out there and pray. That's that's what they do. I mean, remember, um, what was that? The Dark Universe that was supposed to be the, the, the monster movies of Universal and they put um. Uh, the Mummy with uh, Tom Cruise, and they had like all these other movies that they had planned to make, mm -hmm. but the Mummy failed miserably, and they're like, "Nah, we're not going to do that mind. anymore." Yeah, and, and well, they've been trying to do that, I guess, Warner Brothers with um, Godzilla and King Kong. They yes, they tried to force it. Don't don't force it. Just make just make a good no. movie. Just, mm. Yeah, just it'll get there. It'll get there. So speaking of it'll get there, from the Alvin department ross all right i'm gonna mispronounce this name because i'm great with names bagadastarian jr and his wife denise carmen owners of the alvin and chipmunks franchise is seeking to sell the rights to the characters for those of you who do not know alvin and the chipmunks was created by ross's father in 1958 as a children's music act the alvin show uh, began in 1961 
featuring the three animated sing- singing chipmunks, Alvin, Simon, and Theodore, Theodore, with sped up voices to give them their trademark high pitched sound. Several iterations of TV shows and films followed, including the Alvin and the Chipmunks movie in 2007 and three sequels. So, uh, Dominic. Yes. If somebody's out there trying to sell the Alvin and Chipmunk franchise, how much do you think they're looking for? That's a very good question. First of all, I'd say the way to, to say the gentleman's last name is Bagdasarian. Yeah, that. Bag, Bagdasarian. Sounds probably Armenian, actually, but that's just a guess. Um, I am going to say $300 million. Okay. Uh, Jenny Felody, you an Alvin and Chipmunk fan? I liked it when I was little. Yeah, I actually, that was one of the few cartoon shows I tuned into. Uh, how many, how much? Yeah, how much uh, do you think uh, go for? Oh my God. Yeah. I'm going to say, I'm going to say 30, 40 million. 40 million. All right. <laughs> I think it could be sold for a hula hoop like Alvin wants in the song. Wait, did he say 310 million? Dominic? He said 310. So you said 40 million. No, I said 300 million. 300 million. You said 40 million. 310 is, is, is idiotic. Okay. 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 Um, Julie, are you familiar with Alvin and Chipmunks? Yes. <laughs> All right, there we go. Are you a fan or are you just aware of them? I, I thought they were alright as a kid. I wasn't very into certain cartoons. It took a lot for me to get into a certain... You saw the movie? Uh, you saw the movie well, right? yeah, I've seen the movie. Mostly because of Riley, but... <laughs> Riley would um, be their brother for people who are new to the show. Right. Yeah. Not, not for those brother. who are yeah, listening to this, by the way, and don't get to watch it. It's fascinating because when we're on Zoom, when Lee speaks, we get a bigger shot of him. And in the background is a picture of Julie and there's Julie next to him. <laughs> in the th- So it's, the whole thing is fascinating. <laughs> it's very meta. So how much do you I think the franchise would be, uh, would be for uh, Alvin and Chipmunks? I think 200 million. Maybe. 200 million. All right. So Lee, what do you, what do you think? Are you, a, are you an Alvin and Chipmunks fan, first off? Well, I did like the record I used to have when I was growing up. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was their Christmas record. <laughs> I had the All same right. record. <laughs> yeah. So how, uh, much, okay. how much do you think the, uh, the franchise would be worth? What do you think? She took my answer. All right. Um, I guess it would be $250 million. 250 Yeah, I was going to say 200 but... All right, Does so, anyone else feel like like Mark is playing like. the price is right with the Alvin and the chipmunks? 99 cents. 99 yeah. cents. One dollar, so, Mark. One so, dollar. So without going over, uh, Dominic would be correct that it, it is on sale for 300 and 300 million dollars even. Awesome. Can I go play Plinko now? Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> yeah, 300 million dollars. That's what they're looking to get. Whether they get it or not, that's a whole other story. But right now they believe the franchise is worth 300 million dollars. The kids, I'm going to let you in on a tip. Since we're on Zoom, we're in front of computers. You just Google that. <laughs> you just Google it. That's how I know it was 300 billion. I just Google it. <laughs> All right. I'm so calling mo- cheating, but I say it's winning. It's only cheating if you get caught. And, uh, as they say in NASCAR, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. <laughs> so moving on. You're not first, you're last. <laughs> that's, that's true. From the yep. Santa's naughty and not in a good way list department. Oh, this is just wrong. Comic book collector and writer comic book collector, writer, and editor Chris Cummings Cummins had this to say. Overnight, on November 13th, the extra space storage building was burglarized. 28 storage units, including mine, were impacted. All the stuff was taken was the most notable was my comic long boxes. For those who don't know, comic long boxes are the long rectangular boxes where everybody puts their comic books in to keep them in storage. Um, I would say about 2,000, approximately 2,000 comics were all taken. I am a type of collector who gets stuff primarily for reading purposes. I mainly buy back issues of whatever quality I can get my hands on. The fun of collecting for me personally is reading them and not for any potential investment. In fact, most of my collection wasn't even bagged or boarded. As such, the value here is primarily sentimental. Many of these books were brought when my late father and I would go to the comic book stores together. If you can imagine how devastating it is to have my collection that I spent 40 years amassing wiped out in an instant. Although this crime happened on November 13th, I just found out yesterday and was only urging Phil and was only available to get into my locker to assess the damage this morning. I'm urging the Philadelphia area comic stores as well as comic stores online to be on the lookout for anyone trying to unload a massive RT collection or if they have purchased one or have been contacted to do so in the past month, reach out to me. I know the chance of recovery is slim, 
but it's worth a shot. And I know how amazing the comic book industry can be. Uh, I can be contacted at sci fi explosion at gmail.com or through Twitter at Bionic Bigfoot. Oh, Bionic Bigfoot. It's not Dion. Bionic Bigfoot. So somebody went and stole a whole bunch of comics. What a great way to end the year. Yeah, this is why I don't invest in like hard copy things since Hurricane Sandy, because like things can just be taken in an instant, you know? So, so maybe, Jen, that would be uh, where NFTs come into play. So if they had an NFT <laughs> RT collection. Oh God. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, yeah. You can own something that's not real. How about that? <laughs> well, to that point, uh, he tweeted about 11 hours ago, if your comic collection were stolen, would you go digital or try to buy them again? I'm not sure what I'll do, but I'm curious what the hive mind thinks. Oh, so, so he's, he's having the same conversation with his audience right now. I mean, for me, like I, the way he collected is, or co continues to collect, is the way I collected comics. I collected because it's what I wanted to read. I didn't ever collect with the idea I was going to flip books, despite what some other uh, people may think or try to make money on doing, who run, you know, comic cons in New York City. But I never like tried to to get value out of it. Um, and well, I get what he's saying. Don't you remember that uh, in the '90s? If you buy a book, you can oh, put your God. kids through college. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Be, by, if you buy this comic, if you buy The Death of Superman one day, it's going to be worth so much money. You just have to buy 4 million other copies <laughs> and burn 3,999,999 of them. And then hope someone wants this comic. Um, yeah, the, the collection bubble of the 90s. If you, if you were buying comics to collect money, and luckily this man wasn't, you know that's silly i really feel his pain though because like those are sentimental especially when he's talking about his deceased father and these were good memories and this is what you know he, he kept it because it reminded him of his dad and and everything that's that's a shame like plus the comics man like if you're gonna steal something it, that clearly is like thieves that don't know what they're doing right like how many long boxes were there well it says 2000 comics so that's a lot of long boxes it's a lot of long box like First of all, you, he should. It was in a warehouse, right? It was in a yeah. self storage unit. Yeah. Sue the storage unit because to move that many long boxes, it's not like an, a smash and grab in and out job. That was people coming and going from that unit. <laughs> 28 other units in addition. That's just crazy. Yeah. So I know Lee, uh, actually, on, on, our, on our show, you did a Jay Burn Lee segment about buying a book and then selling it that you had collected. So, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I didn't buy it to sell it. I mean, I bought it when I was like, I think it was in 1987 when I was a kid collecting comic books. So, you know, when I finally like, kind of went back and unearthed them from storage, I was just looking at them just to see what was going on with them. And um, what was it? The, the show um, Wanda, right? WandaVision. WandaVision, yeah. WandaVision was out. So, you know, I just took a look to see, you know, if the book was worth anything. Uh, that I had, which would happen to be, I think it was, I think it was uh, when he, when Vision became White Vision. Yes. And that was, you know, originally I just didn't really think too much of it, but I was just looking on it on eBay, and then I was, and they were still going for like fifteen hundred dollars. So I was like, you know what, you know, I'm not going to read it anymore, and let me, you know, and I asked Julie if she wanted to have it for posterity <laughs> or whatever, and she's like, no, I just rather have the cash. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> so i was like all right you know so i just it, it just happened to be i thought it was a good comic i graded it and then just kind of then sold it from there but typically i wouldn't have really gone to that in depth to go sell the thing but that was you know a nice piece of change so i was like all right I'll, I'll do that and i and this guy coming from a guy who has like a ton of baseball cards that are worth nothing from the 80s you know they're just sitting around <laughs> boxes and boxes of stuff and it's you know sentimental value i was collecting those you know the mats just every every team but you know you get to a point where i'm like all right well these are, i know aren't going to be worth anything later on because they did that whole 90s thing and um you know i just felt the with the comic book i was like all right since my kids don't want it and i'm probably just not going to do much with it and you know I thought it was a good comic. I just didn't really, you know, wasn't one to my heart. I'm more of a GI Joe kind of person anyway. So <laughs> I just, uh, I just offloaded it. So, so what, are, so what is, what is America's youth uh, collecting there, Julie? What, what are you collecting, if anything? Um, 
Oh, now I guess AirPods. <laughs> Probably like electronic things or like, um, I don't know, digital apps, stuff like that. I think that my generation sort of revolves around just social media and not really collecting items aside from digital uh, technology. So what about NFTs? Is, is that something that the, that the kids are into? Um, no, mm. but I don't. <laughs> it's more like reality TV and <laughs> just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think their NFT stuff is happening yet. We heard for them. Okay. <laughs> but you used to collect a ton of stuff. There was I like used to collect a lot. I collected like, I don't know, five different. My Little Pony? Or not? Yeah. Was it My Little Pony? Yeah, yeah, My Little Pony, Thomas the Train. Remember that? I think that was the first one that I started. What was those little collecting. things? The Shopkins or something? Shopkins. Uh, I don't know what that is. Oh, like, yeah. They're mini, so they basically, they're like either toys or uh, food, and it just like has a face on them. They're like this big, and I don't know, I used to love them. <laughs> well, Jen, um, you said, you said, oh yeah, so you know what that is? <laughs> no, I was thinking she said they're into reality TV, so I was like, can I hear about which reality TV the kids are into? I'm curious. That's what Grace. I wanted to know about. Grey's Anatomy. Oh, that's that's reality. reality TV. Um, I don't, I'm reality? Oh my god! Yeah. If Grey's Anatomy is reality, ah, at, least that's what, ah. at least that's what they. She's out of it. touch. She's collecting all music. That's what it is. All the indie. Yeah, music. I know. I'm a music person. Is. I'm not really. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm music. All right. Yeah. So let's let's get to our last bit of news. From the. Is it musical? <laughs> no, it is not musical. Oh, well. it's, it's a it's aromatherapy. Uh -huh. It's aromatherapeutic. Oh. From the it still smells like chicken department for the fourth year in a row. I don't know where this is going, man. <laughs> for the fourth year in a row, Kentucky Fried Chicken once again is teaming up with Walmart and has brought back the chicken flavored smelling fire log. But this year, they've added a contest to go with it. Um, each log purchase will have a unique QR code, which is a little gray box thing that you can scan with your phone, uh, that redirects you to the official entry form site to win a three-day, two-night getaway for up to eight people at a luxurious 7,000-square-foot KFC cabin situated on 200 acres inside a protected nature reserve in Kentucky. Uh, the guests will also be treated to a private gourmet dinner prepared at the cabin by you, but KFC head chef Chris Scott. I they have a I guess, log I guess, that smells like chicken. Yes, they have. So this is the fourth year in a row. So you know how they have the, the Yule log. So they made a Kentucky Fried Chicken smelling log. You put it in the fireplace, and it smells like Kentucky Fried Chicken in your house. You know how Why like they have those memes. Yeah, you have you have those memes that are like. Nobody, absolutely nobody. And then there's a picture of someone doing something ridiculous. Yeah. Yes. This is a live version of that. Something that <laughs> nobody needed, nobody Me. asked for, nobody wanted. <laughs> Here, have a have a log that smells like fried. Well, it doesn't <laughs> smell like Kentucky Fried Chicken have a until, fire, until you then, burn it. <laughs> yeah, why don't you actually just have a fire in your fireplace and go get some KFC from Grubhub? But then it won't keep you warm. <laughs> There's a fire. It'll keep you warm. <laughs> Who, it's like it's, it's it. right up there with Gwyneth Paltrow's candle. Who needs that? All right, so, well, it's so, like they have vanilla candles and cake candles and pumpkin spice. Why not chicken? I like it. I like things that smell like food. That's actually one of my rules for perfume. It smells like food. I don't want to smell like flowers. And then that'll lead us to our next question for Lee, but we'll get to that later. Go ahead. Go bring it out. Bring in your question. Well, we I, saw one of the, I saw one of the, the films, uh, your, your screenwriter, so said no flowers. I'm, I'm oh, not into, I don't want to receive flowers. <laughs> I'd rather receive candles and logs and stuff that smell like chicken. That's been incredible. I thought <laughs> you wanted perfume that made you smell like chicken. Or, or that, maybe, maybe. <laughs> I do like the oh. smell of food. I had that guys get in my car. I'm like, oh, you smell like food. And they apologize. I'm like, no, no, I love the smell of hamburgers. You smell great. <laughs> now, let me ask you, as because you're also a personal trainer, correct? True, true. Is this a way that you get your clients to keep coming back? <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm not like my dad. My dad's a dentist and he used to have candy and he used to have like a candy dish. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> And it really, because I've picked his brain on this so many times and I know it's not malicious based on his response. So I'm like, something's just, you know, it, it's like these geniuses that just a few things they don't get. They're, they're too smart. They're really dumb in some areas. 
So yes. um, maybe mm-hmm. I'm just dumb in this area. I just like chicken candles or, or maybe I got into personal training because I have eating problems and I like food too much. Ah, maybe that's it. I don't know. I just think, look, if you have like overweight clients, great way to have them keep coming back to the gym. It always smells like fast food. <laughs> you, you think I'm thinking of my clients. I'm just thinking of food I want to eat. That's what's going on here. I just don't like we, food. <laughs> don't we all want to eat hamburgers? I have so, clients. I don't even think about them. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so before we take our break, uh, Julie, what do you think of a uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken smelling Yule log. <laughs> um, <Yeah>. no, <laughs> just, just no. Uh, I, I would not. No, okay. I, I would not want to conduct. Yeah. Yeah. More for uh, me. More for yeah. me. <laughs> well, we know. We think? know what to get her. I, I think I'd rather have one that smells like pork chops and applesauce. I don't that's know. an interesting combination. <laughs> it's a Brady Bunch reference. <laughs> oh, okay. <All> right. <laughs> Pork and apples go together very well. Yeah. I so, I, I <laughs> Mark, at, at the, it came from the radio holiday party this year. We know what we need to get, Jen. Okay. So, with awesome. that, first, going... we actually have to have a holiday party, but second, we know what to get, Jen. <laughs> Correct. I so, love chicken. So, with that, we're going to take our break and we'll be right back with it came from the radio. Yeah. Hey, everybody, this is Todd McFarland of the Record Setting Spawn comic series. And if you're looking for any kind of cool conversation about creators, about entertainment, about all that good stuff, you go to It Came From The Radio. You're listening to the right spot. This is Quentin Flynn, a popular voice actor known for Axel, Tamar, uh, and Ryden from the Metal Gear series. And you're listening to It Came From The Radio. Stick around. I'm Mike Kingston, the writer and creator of Headlocks. And I am WWE Hall of Famer Jerry the King Lawler. And guess what you're listening to? You're listening to It Came From The Radio. Hi, this is Amy Jo Johnson, writer-director from the film The Space Between. And you're listening to It Came From The Radio. Grimlock having fun on It Came From The Radio. Greg Berger also. Now, back to our show. And welcome back to the Game from the Radio, the official of the Big Apple Con. This is your host, Mark Torres, speaking in front of our live studio audience virtually, of course, for our 50th first live show courtesy of the east metal public library east metal public library has tons and tons of free programming both virtual and in person so you guys want to find out more information go to www.eastmetal.info and they have all the stuff is for free so go check it out so i am here with our very own fishy sarcasms dominic definition and serrano hello everybody we have our very own from d life for jenner g's jenny feldy good evening and we have our special guest who we're talking to with and about. We have filmmaker uh, Lee Kalinsky. Hello. And his daughter, podcaster, Julie Kalinsky. Hello. So I guess the, the, we should just get down with it. Uh, the, for, for full disclosure, um, Julie and Lee have a segment on our show called the Jay Bird and Lee segment. So why don't you just mention how did that come to be? Um. Honestly, I think like one day uh, my dad was just like, hey, do you want to do a podcast? And I was like, sure, just during uh, COVID. It was very simple and that's sort of just how it sprouted. Like uh, in the middle of COVID, he, we didn't really have much to do when we were home. So uh, we were like, yeah, sure, let's do a podcast. <laughs> and did you talk about what you're going to do beforehand or was it just like, let's just talk about whatever? Uh, we were like, we could talk about movies and TV and like music, things like that, just every day. Uh, everyday things. <laughs> yeah, so, so it. Lee, did you find this to be a, a bonding experience between you and your daughter? Or is this something that you wanted to do? Or is this something that just, also, like she said, it just popped up and came to be? Well, I just thought it was a fun thing to do. It seemed like, you know, yeah, a bonding experience to hang out and talk about movies and, you know, um, just really anything, really. Um, I, originally, I was thinking maybe we'd talk about more like, life at school and that kind of stuff but um you know we didn't really go in that direction for now it was just sort of like you know we're home we're watching a lot of stuff (laughs) and listening to a bunch of music and you know I think um well you know Julie and I were on your show at, at the radio station and we thought you know she really liked being there so I just figured let's try it um on a podcast level see how it went 
So is that what happened, Julie? When you were uh, when you were on the uh, the studio, it was WGBB in Long Island, Long Island's oldest radio mm-hmm. station. Uh, you were like, I want to do this for the rest of my life, or or what? <laughs> I, I thought it was awesome. I'm like, this would be cool. This would be cool to do. Uh, I I mean, I did. I really liked it, and I, I was nervous at first. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> uh, it was it was fun. I'm glad that I wound up choosing doing the podcast with my dad. So do you think that you would have done it on your own or did it have to be with your dad? Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I think the intention originally is for us to work together and then maybe yeah. branch off where she's like, oh, I could do this all by myself and have my own guests on or whatever, you know? But right now it just seems it's, it's good. I think, I, I hope it's going well. <laughs> it, know, is, it is, it is. <laughs> well, as long as you're enjoying yourself, that's the important thing. When it when mm-hmm. it stops being fun, that's when it's not good. No, it's fun. It's fun doing it. I like doing it. It's it's definitely a nice thing to uh, have and bond with uh, my dad. <laughs> so, do you just go about your normal day to day life and you say, "Oh, this would make a good thing to talk about," or do you specifically plan things ahead of time? Well, we usually plan things ahead of time. Uh, we have like a bunch of like experience, either experience we've experiences we've had or uh, movies we've watched or like a type of music we like etc and uh then we like write it down on the list and then we record it (laughs) so so lee as a filmmaker did you ever imagine yourself doing a live type of programming like this um i don't you know i didn't think about it like that too much um i was always really nervous about getting on air in the first place when I would make a film and then was interviewed by somebody from the news or whatever I was like terrible with it so for me it's kind of like leaning into the uncomfortable zone and trying to like break through right Um, I mean when I was in college I took a lot of radio classes and stuff like that and I thought that was cool but now with all this media of like being on screen you know that was always my fear like oh you know what am I gonna look like when I'm on tv or whatever and you know, I, I just felt that this was a good opportunity to do something pretty cool and, and like I said, lean into the uncomfortable. So, Jen, is that a, is that a, a factual statement that it's leaning into the uncomfortable being interviewed and as an actress? Yeah, I would say I'm, I, was, I think I'm always uncomfortable and I'm going to Florida soon and uh, my boyfriend sent me a bunch of things to do and I said, you know, <laughs> everything you sent me is shooting me like 800 meters into the air or throwing me in the water. And I'm scared. I'm scared almost every day. Why do I have to go on vacation and be scared? Like, are you trying to kill me? Like, I, I, I need a break. So yes, I'm always scared. I shot a movie yesterday. It's scary. You know, even this has a little bit of nerves to it. You know, I was relaxed all day and it's like, you feel nerves. And, you know, this is a comfortable insular type of thing that we're doing now, especially with COVID. But I have a question for for you guys, for your podcast, do you have any messages that you'd like to get across or something you're trying to share specifically? I, I think for the most part, we're just having a good time. I just want to really share like how father daughter bond, you know, and just kind of like, that's really the message. I mean, for the most part, it's just that we're having fun watching TV, going to concerts, whatever, you know, mm-hmm. and I think that's what we're trying to get across a little bit of our, um, hopefully a little funny once in a while and (laughs) just uh just a lighthearted kind of show i mean sometimes we're serious about things but you know especially during like the whole pandemic stuff but um we're not very serious in most of our cast or target demographic that you that you think you're missing or that you're hitting well i think we're hitting um actually julie's age group so Mm. it's it's actually from what our statistics are, it seems like it's probably like 13 to 27, seems like. So okay, interesting. It's pretty wide, you know, range, but it seems like that's most of our listeners at this point. Interesting. Just wondering, I was thinking about demographics today for, for different media. <laughs> so that's what's on my mind. <laughs> yeah, and actually it's more female. So I think okay. they really like uh, listening to Julie. <laughs> I think you have the opposite demographic that I have. <laughs> I think I'm excluding, I think I'm very strongly excluding that demographic, but I don't know. May, maybe I should try something in your audience and, and see how much they hate me. I don't know. I don't know. I'm Continue. Sure don't carry, like carry along. <laughs> Dominic, you got a question for the group? Uh, for the group, yeah. Like, is Janet a rave? 
you can't, <laughs> unless you watch this on the YouTube you watch page. This on the Facebook, uh, the YouTube page or anything, she's like got streaming green lights and like purple, and she's walking around. She looks like the weekend when he was doing the show on on uh, Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Like, he's just like looking around, and I'm watching this whole thing. I'm listening to Lee and Julie, but I'm like, where is she? What is she doing? This is like some like weird psychedelic thing going on. I love it. Well, you know, it's funny after nightfall, right? So like to keep the melatonin up, I always use salt lamps or I have this thing that has this streaming thing that oh. creates this type of background, right? And it's very okay. relaxing, but specifically to get back onto the movie topic, because you guys watch movies and review them, the, this game's called Murder Review, which thanks to Mark and this radio show, I was given a preview and it's a very cool movie and I reviewed it. And, uh, they have lighting like this. So I forgot I had lighting downstairs in my gym. So what am I doing? It's always downstairs in the gym and I'm afraid of my basement. So I don't go when, when I'm not with clients or at night. Let's bring this upstairs. And this game's called Murder has very cool lighting. So shout out to that movie. Hmm. And if you guys haven't watched it, it's very violent, but it's very cool. What's in your basement <laughs> that you're so afraid of? It's the I, had three people, I had three people tell me that it's haunted and two people pointed to the same spot and said there's something evil there. Oh! You know, oh. I thought you were going to say uh, that three people died down there. I thought you were going with that. Maybe. I mean, now that I'm aware, I, I don't know. You, I mean, if people die down there, you got to tell Mark so we have more sad news for next week. Right, right, <laughs> right. We just have to have the sad news. Or I'll uh, just kill them. You know, however you want to roll, you know, it, or we'll just be out of a job, but it's okay. <laughs> My big question, though, for um, for Lee and Julie is like, I think it's great having podcasts where you actually talk to people like when you're talking to each other as opposed to just trying to sit and record your own voice because then you just end mm -hmm. up rambling so I, mm -hmm. I i always prefer like i love our show because we have jen and mark and charlie when you can make it and like it's the four of us constantly talking the only time i feel it ever works is when you have just one person as if they're like telling a story like those crazy murder <laughs> murder podcast We're like let me tell you about the bayside strangler and they're telling you know uh do you plan on and in including do you have guests on are you gonna like or just just the two of you discussing stuff uh, we've been uh trying to get a few guests on like we've had uh my brother and i think we've had my cousin as a guest so far but we're well, yeah i'm getting i think well, we're like the three actual of us. guests <laughs> yeah we've had like special sit-ins but we were actually i think we were thinking of getting going with the guest route and bringing in some people mm -hmm. um we just haven't really set it up yet that's part of the building of my little studio that i want to do <laughs> so we want to do a thing well uh, if you want get... crazy psychedelia i, I highly recommend that <laughs> i do i like it you're in the, like the nebula over there so and also there. i don't have to do my makeup because you can't see me ha <laughs> ha see that's a really good trick <laughs> for podcasters anyone out there content creators just put lighting like this and girls you don't have to wear makeup <laughs> there you go that's... follow us for more daily makeup <laughs> tips everybody <laughs> Listen, I'm a makeup artist and you know work on film. So this is actually a real tip for makeup artists and podcasters that don't want to put stuff on your face because it's not very good for women to be constantly putting stuff on their face to broadcast. It's not. It's not actually, what don't you do, Jen? Construction, taxes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it yeah. actually brings up a good point that she mentioned. So Lee, as a filmmaker, um, do you do lots of lighting and camera tricks or do you do lots of makeup for the actors and actresses? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so on the sets that I've worked on, we've always had uh, makeup artists and, and hair and um, yeah, lighting. We, we have it all pretty much. You know, we try to do it as a... Uh, professional as possible to make it look good um you know sometimes some shoots are a little harder to do that than others it's kind of got this short film and it's not a lot of budget you know mm -hmm. not a lot of cash for that so you know you'll find people who are just willing to hopefully do it for less money or no money and basically you know we try to get everybody looking as good as possible on film especially now since like digital is like right yeah in so, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a pretty important part, I think, you know, for, for most people to have some sort of, even if it's just like blush or something or whatever it is, you know, just, just to shine a little, get the shine off, you know, because people sweat under the lights and there's just like a whole thing. So, mm -hmm. 
Julie, have you ever been to your dad's sets? Uh, I have, uh, I think, I don't know, maybe four times, I think, like a bunch when I was younger. And then I went for, um, I went one like two years ago in New Jersey. I think it was for a generation change. But yeah, you're on the set for yeah. that documentary. So yeah, that was that was really fun. It was it was nice getting to meet the uh, people interviewed and seeing how it actually is. Um, yeah, when you know, you're making a movie. Making a movie. Mm -hmm. Well, you did a voiceover recently for a trailer that we just did that um, has uh, actually the late Ed Asner in it. So we're doing a spin, well, a continuation of a film. Um, that we did Junkie Heaven and we're doing a new reiteration of it called uh, DBX or the Doyle Burke Experience. And we put together a clip and, and Julie does the voiceover for it, so. Mm -hmm. So is it because she's your daughter that she got the job or is it because mm -hmm. she does? <laughs> Darn right, nepotism <laughs> at its best. Yeah, good. <laughs> Own it. <laughs> Is, is that mm -hmm. something that you thought that um, maybe somewhere down the line you're going to be an actress in your dad's movies? Uh, maybe, depending on the roles there are in the movie. I don't know if he's going to make like a kid film or something with a teenager, et cetera. But Dude, you act on the I other. would be, like, I would be in one if I could. <laughs> well, yeah. You, you want to, I mean, you were acting in plays and stuff so mm -hmm. just getting her training in <laughs> yep so is that why you had a kid so you can have a an actress on, on call at all times <laughs> <laughs> yes that's the main reason to have children <laughs> little actors and actresses it is for me <laughs> look 100 years ago you had kids to work the farm and exactly you set. i need exactly. a grip I mean, everyone wants to be a, a podcaster, filmmaker, and influencer now. So we went from farms to digital age. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But I don't mm -hmm. know. Remember when there used to be a digital farm <laughs> called Farmland? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. I was addicted to that game. Yep. <laughs> Lee, I have a question for you. So I, I saw that a lot of your films, are, I haven't seen, I need to see them, but I saw they're mostly dr dramas. So I was wondering what type of topics um, excite you? Like, are there certain themes that you find that you're always drawn to? Yeah, well, I'm always looking for, like, relationships with, like, family for the most part. But okay. the movies that I get made are more of the dramatic kind of, you know, something that's not high budget, not a lot of special effects, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I like to do, I like to bounce around from subject to subject. So I did a film, I wrote a film about bullying. I wrote a film about drug abuse, basically. Um, mafia movies were kind of like the one thing I was, uh, seemed like people liked those movies a lot at the time I was kind of writing mm -hmm. them. And those were the ones I had made, been made for me. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. people like to produce those for some reason, I guess it was just, uh, I don't know if it was like a Sopranos or Godfather type thing. <laughs> that people really wanted to make those types of movies hmm. but yeah no I mean I, I get um I read I would love to do like sci-fi that's kind of my thing but it is um hard to do because of the budget so mm -hmm. I, I mm -hmm. kind of do it a little bit on a lower key you know yeah I'd, I'd assume my mom movies in terms of budgets are less expensive oh yeah than a sci-fi movie yeah, yeah. And I got to a point where I was doing a lot of dramas, but you get to a point where you start, first I start writing for like a big budget film and then I'm realizing like, how am I gonna get this made? And cause it's such a long road in general to get a screenplay produced. And then you just scale it back to a point where you, you know, we think it's a, it's, it's a really good story. That's what I'm looking for, a really good story that has okay. a twist. Usually my stories have twists and, um, at the end of the day, like you don't necessarily want two people just in a room talking to each other. It's kind of, it's kind of like the talking head syndrome in a way, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. for the most part, you don't want to go the Kevin Smith route. This... Right. The, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, even Kevin Smith has some like, you know, you know, funny stuff. It's all in a room, you know, wherever they right. are, but it's just, um, uh, yeah. I mean, you just don't want to get to the point where it's boring for the audience. 
you know, I start to think about the audience more as uh, you make these films. So it's, it's um, you know, I do like making movies that are just, you know, have some action, drama, and twist, you know, and I do try to go for this, I do try to go for some sci-fi, but it's, it's tough. As you've written and made budget. more movies, do you find it takes you longer now to write and create, or is it getting faster? Like Neil Gaiman said, as he was writing Sandman, he used to be the first uh, ones he could do in three weeks out of the month. <clears throat> and then towards the end of the series, it was taking him like five weeks a month. Like it was, it was taking him longer because he was putting more craft and more time into it. And you're saying like, now you're really thinking more of what the audience is going to experience. Yeah, it does take a little bit longer in some cases. Like there was a run that I had for years where it was just pumping out scripts. It was just like script after script. And then, you know, after a while, I was just like, okay, you know what? I need to take a step back a little bit and, you know, write something a little bit more, a little slower, you know, take a little time into it. And I'm not to say the scripts that I wrote were bad or anything before then, but it was just fast. And now I'm just kind of taking my time to kind of like analyze a bigger picture, you know, because you, you, you do think of the audience, you do think of the budget. Am I making this for Hollywood or am I making it for myself? You know, and then you start to mm -hmm. think of those kind of terms, you know, because when I first started out as a screenwriter, I was applying to every agency on Sun, and it was really difficult to get an agent. And, you know, I had them they drop me after a while and then you get to a stage where you're like well you know i'm not getting necessarily paid for every script that i'm writing anyway right now i'm not work for hire because we just don't have the money for the budget so then i kind of just switched a little bit and decided to get a real job for the most part quote unquote you know and do a different direction right mm -hmm. so you know um but then you know as digital came in it made it just so much easier because everything else was on on regular film like and you were just right. like, that's that was where everything skyrocketed and now it's like oh well if i have a digital whatever i can make a movie on an iphone now you know so yeah. it's, it's people wild. make movies on iphones all the time now it's crazy right it's a whole thing they even have what the cinematic version of of the video on on the phone so it's like a crazy setting that you could even do so um it, it was it was just a different it does take longer to do a feature script for me but I you know I always go back and look at these things I'm like did I do the did I write the right thing after a while there's a point where you're like I have to I have to be finished with this and I have to go on because I could write the same screenplay over and over again and edit it and say that this is better and whatever and there's just a certain point where it's like you know what I'm good to print, you know, and if people don't like it, we'll fix it on set or whatever it is, you know. Fix it in post. Uh, we'll fix it in post. We'll do it in post. That's right. Fix it in post. So has there ever been a subject that you two do for your uh, Jay Burn Lee podcast that you're like, we're not going to talk about it? Like Junkie Heaven? We didn't talk about any of my films. We on haven't this, talked on. about your films. Yeah, well, unspoken. But is that like is that like something that you purposely avoid, or is it just any anything's uh, available? Pui, is there anything um, that you find that the subject matter would not be appropriate for your show? Uh, I haven't watched them or been allowed to watch them. So yeah, I mean, it was one of them. Uh, right. Staying ahead, but Staying ahead you saw, yeah. Otherwise, I haven't. Too. Yeah. I mean, I remember one time my friend was watching. <laughs> my uh, friend watched my dad's movies before I did. But... <laughs> uh, what were the reviews? Did you hear reviews about them? Uh, yeah, he, he liked them a lot. <laughs> of course, otherwise he's going to get be in the next mob movie, for real. Yep. You know? <laughs> and Alec Baldwin bring him on set and be like, we're, we're forget, we're, you know, we got to make this authentic. <laughs> for the most part, we haven't really just it was it just never came up to do it on the show and i think for us like the only taboo things i guess that we wouldn't touch is kind of like your i guess julie's like relationships with her friends right like we haven't talked mm. about any of that kind of stuff yeah you know? well that's just kind of gossip it's not really even a yeah. show <laughs> i think we should make a gossip right, exactly. show i would love, i would listen to that gossip show by julie's friends i'm, I'm pretty interested <laughs> really? I'm, I'm there 
<laughs> You're interested well, in the antics of the high school teenager. You know what? I don't really know many high schoolers. I'm friends with a lot of old pe- older people and like maybe six years younger, away from six years younger, but I'm not in touch. So I'm kind of would like to hear what's going on. <laughs> what's going on? Tell us. Someone over here in Tyasa wants to know. So who likes who and who? Tell who, us what the kids like. <laughs> who, yes. who likes who? We want to know what the kids like. <laughs> yes. Who's dating who? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, who just I broke know. up and started dating someone new will break up and go back I to the other person what, yeah. what, did, what did they put on social media that they shouldn't have exactly <laughs> like 13 year old gossip I'm bored with like the 40 50 6 year old gossip I see like 60 year olds <laughs> writing on Facebook all day like arguing about Dr. Fauci it's like let's who's, hear about 13 year olds you know? who stupidly bought oregano and thought they could smoke it tell us right. <laughs> yeah so so that's and, you know you bring up an interesting point there Dominic as 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 a, as America's youth, and, you, and your finger on the pulse, mm-hmm. do you find that these quote unquote challenges are something that your friends are doing, and that you like, yeah, this is a good idea, or do you like, oh. this is really stupid? Did you, any of your friends eat Tide Pods? <laughs> <laughs> At least I don't think so. <laughs> um, I mean, I think most of it is just honestly stupid, so I don't really get involved with that type of stuff. The Bye. crate challenge. Are you just saying that because your dad is yeah, there? I was just no, thinking. No, the I like, no, I seriously don't actually <laughs> get involved. I believe it. Day. I believe it. Like, okay. I'm, like I don't want to. I don't want that on my record. I don't want that just <laughs> in general. So I also don't want to get a, like addicted to anything. So I'm like, you know what? No, I'll, yeah. I'll leave that for other people. <laughs> addicted to Tide Pods and crate challenges. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's a future Growing. documentary right there. That's right. <laughs> That's funny. So we're at social media time. So yeah. um, Lee, where can people find out more about your stuff? Where can they find a, check out your movies? Um, all that stuff. Go. Oh, okay. Uh, you can check out our movie, my movies on Amazon. I have them there. 713 Films always has some kind of feed or information about our documentary stuff. Um, let's see. Jaybird and Lee, you can check us out on Spotify, right? And Pandora mm-hmm. and right here featured on your show. It came from the radio. That's um, correct. Yeah. Facebook. We're Facebook people. And what about you, Julia? What about your many fans? Can they reach out to you? Do you have a fan page? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not yet. The Facebook no, page is your fan page. <laughs> it's all monitored by your dad, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know. She might have a TikTok somewhere that I don't know about. No, I don't. You're not. <laughs> you're you're not. A, you're not a TikToker. I mean, I occasionally post, but <laughs> I mean, my dad's. I follow my dad, and he follows me. Like, I follow my family; they follow me back. So, whatever I post, it's sort of just Big Brother. Known. <laughs> All right, fair enough. So we're almost out of time. So let's do our final thoughts. So. Fitchy sarcasm, Dominic definition, Marion Serrano. Do you have a final thought for us? Yes. Rather than going out to the clubs, I recommend you go to <laughs> Jen's house. She's got all the cool stuff, fun lighting, a haunted basement, a house that smells like fried chicken that <laughs> grew on a, a, a log in the fireplace. That's where, oh, that's where me and my lady are going to start doing date nights. Oh, date night at, at Jen's studio. <laughs> she, yeah. That was great. Do you pay extra for the smell, for the chicken smell? <laughs> No, I'll throw it in. Oh, there you go. For, free. All right. for you guys, for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so Life with Jenny, Jen, Jenny Feldy, do you have any final thoughts for us? Well, also depends on what kind of smell. I'll, th- I'll throw in a smell, but I'm not going to tell you what kind. Um, <laughs> my final thought would be take care of your skin and don't put garbage on your skin. And if you, if you feel like you got to do something, just change the lighting. Don't change your skin because guess what? You're not going to get a new set of skin. See you later. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Filmmaker Lee Kalinsky, do you have any final thoughts for us? Oh, final thoughts. Let's see. Um, what's a good one? Uh, I don't know. Basically, I just wanted to, I mean, look, I just learned about a uh, Yule log with smells like chicken. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm just that, excited that, to learn something. Today. That's <laughs> terrible marketing. It's been around for four years. <laughs> you didn't <Sorry>. know. <laughs> well, it's not like uh, Elf on the Shelf or something. I don't you know. <laughs> no. All right, one day so. it will be. Well, so, I'm just uh, glad I learned something today. All right. So, Julie, you get you get the final thoughts. Do you have any final thoughts for us? Oh, uh, I just wanted to say thank you guys for uh, having us on here, and it's really thank been a you. pleasure seeing you guys today. 
All right, so my final thought is this. Uh, once again, thank you for being a guest on our show, and thank you for providing us with uh, hours of content uh, with your Jay Lee segments. Much continued success with the podcast and your filmmaking career. Um, so that about does it for this week on It Came From the Radio. Join us right here and every week on this radio station. If you miss any part of this show, tough. Go to our website, www.itcamefromradio.com. Look up, um, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, archives will be up in a week or so. I also want to mention that our next live show, which will be our 52nd live show, which will be with um, author Roland Alnack. So that will be on January the 12th of 2022 for next year. Um, so then I guess that is about it. So have a good one. Happy holidays. And we'll see you uh, next time. Thank you, guys. You've been listening to It Came From the Radio with Mark Torres. The views of the show's hosts and guests did not necessarily reflect that of the management, owners, or staff of the station. We now return you to your earthly scheduled broadcast.